everyone. Welcome to the Toon Boom streams, which are either on YouTube or on Twitch as just take which one you prefer. Just choose. Just pick one because if you look at both at the same time, it's not going to work out. So just pick one. Go there. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, my name is marie but people usually call me Mel or Z because I also ever so happen to have a YouTube channel where I share little nuggets of knowledge here and there when I don't forget to post a video. I forgot this week, but it's coming. And um, today I am joined uh, with an amazing artist, um, which I will let uh, themselves introduce to you. It's someone who's uh, very talented, who does lots of animation and design and stuff. So it should be very interesting. So, um, lovely person, who are you? <laughs> Hello. Um, well, I'm Etienne Cote, but most people know me as uh, Nuka. I'm 21. Um, I'm a graduate from uh, Cégep du Vieux Montréal in uh, Quebec. Uh, well, in the province of Quebec, it's in Montreal, but. Um, I graduated in 2D animation, um, and I'm from a small village, I see, in the, in the province, but I live now in Quebec City, and uh, I'm uh, I'm an artist yeah, we who, <laughs> who's having fun, is silly, and uh, yes, uh, Z yeah, invited me to We studied so far at the same school, which is interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, it. Um, Z invited me today for uh, a live stream to uh, talk about my stuff. And, uh, well, I, I don't know if I can talk about the subject right now or I'll let you do that. I mean, I was going to introduce it right now. So today's yeah. amazing subject is going to be the integration of 3D, uh, 3D into 2D settings. So if you're using Harmony or Stormer Pro or whatever, you can use 3D models into your scenes. And there's many ways to do that and many reasons in which it's useful. And sometimes it's a bit less useful. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about. So 2D, 3D integration uh, in Harmony specifically in that case. But I might like talk about Story Pro a little bit as I go. <laughs> and um, yeah, and we're going to use uh, Nuka's amazing scenes. There's a bunch of them. It's going to be very fun to talk about and explore. And um, at the same time, we're also going to learn more about your projects you're, you're making because you're working on a very cool little pilot project thingy. And it'll be very nice to kind of give some little spotlight to that project. Yes. And at the same time, answering questions from the chat if we get them. Also, I want to point Maybe out uh, my. Mm -hmm. uh, my first language is French, so if I uh, stumble on some words or uh, I'm having a hard time sentencing stuff, uh, just please excuse me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you for, for mentioning it. I usually do when I open the call, but that is correct. Uh, me and uh, Nuka, both our languages, our first language is French. So if we stumble upon the language, just know we're doing our best. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ex we won't even apologize for the accent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's been a couple minutes. I hope everybody's comfortably seated in, get their little tea or glass of water or whatever, because uh, we're going to get started with this. So um, I know you already mentioned where you studied, but we're just going to make uh, do a little more uh, weight on that. Um, we both went to the same animation school, and with that school, what's interesting is that it's not only a 2D animation school, there is also a 3D uh, program within the same school. So do, do you mind, would you mind just like um, talking to us about a little bit about like how was the school, um, um, like how going to school was with like all the mixing and students and whatever and stuff? Yeah, of course. Um, well, the school is uh, very welcoming. It's the first thing that came to my mind. It's a pretty old school, I'd say. It's been like open since the 70s, if oh, I'm yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah I least. think that's it. And uh, yeah, it's very, uh, it's very open. Um, lots of diversity. Um, everyone is welcoming. I, to be honest, I went to uh, um, 
hang on, <laughs> a, a high school. I went to a high school where uh, I've been kind of judged and feel bullied. And bullied and stuff, yeah. Yeah, it, it was a bit toxic and I, I thought uh, college <clears throat> would be the same or worst. And it was a completely different experience. I felt so welcome. That's such an I'm, interesting point. Yeah, I I really made friend um, literally the same day, um, and didn't even struggle to uh, to uh, fit in and have fun with my my peers. But that's such an important point, and like I'm very glad that you went there <laughs> like to that, that little. Uh, um, I'm glad I did. Um, subject, <laughs> yeah. I mean, both <laughs> to the school, but also like to the subject in question. Because if there is like viewers like listening to this stream and maybe they're anxious about going to school or whatever, um, there's often a big, big difference between high school <laughs> and like co college. In our case, like university and like mm -hmm. these kind of higher education school. Um, especially for animation because i know a lot of us like are often like we don't have the best uh, time in high school and stuff because you know like the artists sometimes we get the not so fun treatment <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> but let it be known whenever you yeah whenever you go to um animation school it's often very different because then it's you're going to be with so many like like-minded people in a yeah way. it's like it's like family and, yeah. um, yeah, so that's a very interesting point. I, I never talk about it, but you're so We all right. share, share the same passion. And, and also people are much usually older. Like yeah. there's a big age gap between high school and university and stuff. So <laughs> um, so if you're scared of that in school, just know that usually when it's higher education, you get a bit less of these things. I mean, there's still drama, but it's different drama. It's, like, yeah. it's, 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 it's more much less than... bullying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's much more like who's dating who rather than who's <laughs> bullying who. I'll be honest. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh my god. Where, yeah. Where I was like, where are we going with this? But an uh, excellent <laughs> point. And also, um, do you think the fact that the program both had like a two D and a three D program kind of um, guided you a bit more towards using three D assets in your own scene? Because I think I saw the scene that you had shared before with like a staff in your yeah. hobby scene. Uh, um, so I, I wanted to uh, talk about it a bit. Oh. You've probably seen <laughs> this, this uh, my you. short. Yeah, uh, you yeah. can. Sh yeah, you, you should show it. Uh, like uh, right now. It's just like, yeah, it's just a minute. If you, I mean, if you want to show it, you can. Just. I, I don't mind, but I don't think I have the sound on yet. Um, is it? Okay. Well, I mean, even. Do you hear something? Even without the sound, we can just see it and talk about it. That's what I mean. So like, um, yeah, that's perfect. That's so cool. Thank you. So for that, for that short film, you did like ninety nine percent of everything, right? Uh, I did a hundred percent of everything. Yeah, that's what honest. I was gonna say. Um, no, except the sound mixing. I, I, um, I seek help to uh, uh, from one of my uh, best friend. Um, she's called Black Cat. Mm -hmm. I don't know if some people yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why I was saying like 99 person because like you know yeah. teachers always give advice and you probably have like friends helping and stuff mm -hmm. just to like get it together uh, but like yeah that's that's all of your work so design animation compositing yep, so um, everything you did amazing by the way good job thank you so much um so yeah I had um I seek help for the sound mixing but all the all the the rest is from me, and it, I got to say it's my biggest um, achievement so far. Yeah, uh, I, I'm good. very proud of it. Um, so there. Yeah, because the school we attended, just for context of again people watching, because in schools there's a lot of different things. Some schools have these like um, last year short film has team project. The school we attended, they let they have you do everything. It's your baby, like you do. Well, everything, quote unquote, like I said, you can still help and give advice to people, but like backgrounds are yours, characters are yours. And they do that to teach us about the industry as a whole so that when you graduate you you're and you have to do backgrounds for production, you will know that it's better to name your layers and separate things for like a multi-plane and stuff. So like they're trying to broaden your mind <laughs> about the industry. <laughs> That's the context. That's why we do everything in um, that school. But like I said, that school also has a 3D and a 2D program. 
And the fun thing with this is that you are going to school with like your cohort, like your 2D people. But also in parallel, there is the 3D people as well. And it's cool because since you're in the same location in a way, sometimes there's exchange that comes mm -hmm. and like three students can help you do like some props and then you can help them with design. Was it something that happened to you in school? Like, did you have some help or give help to 3D people? Um, we had some talk sometime, um, but 3D people are, um, uh, 3D people and 2D people are usually s separated, even if we like cross each other in the, in, yeah, we don't have the uh, same classes. classes. Yeah, we don't have the same <laughs> classes, obviously. But uh, yeah, they're very nice people, uh, just like us. It's just a, a, a different medium. And uh, sometimes when we needed help with just... Um, uh, like an object, a prop or yeah, something. Yeah, an object, exactly. Or just how, how to animate <clears throat> in, in harmony. Um, they usually help a lot. Um, like this stuff right here. Um, I had some help from a student and uh, and a teacher. Oh, who, that's uh, sweet. Yeah, who is uh, basically uh, well, he, he's teaching two D and uh, no, he's not teaching. He's a tech. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's Sebastien. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, Seb. laughs> so nice. <laughs> yeah, he is. So um, this prop right here. Um, uh, has been really useful for my my short because every time you see uh, the the staff in the short, uh, well, it has been traced over the the three D model, so it helps me uh, a lot to keep it on on uh, tied up. <clears throat> so whenever you were using uh, these like three D props. Um... How would like what was your kind of like process uh, in a way like let's say you were able to redraw this prop like trace over it or something well actually yeah. would you sometimes trace over it sometimes just reference it like how did you because there's so many ways to use three D in harmony so can you walk us through some of these processes that you went through for my movie I uh, I traced over it simply uh, because it was like very uh, on model and <laughs> something uh, yeah. And it's something um, quite sturdy, so mm -hmm. it doesn't need to flex or um, or uh, bend. With uh, even if in some of uh, some sh well, yeah, <laughs> in, if in some shots um, I did bend it with uh, um, how do you call it? Yeah, if it goes fast and uh, stuff and. How do you call it? Um, the the thing right here, um, the deformer. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So I, I traced yeah. over it, so smart. then pegged it with a deformer, and I could I uh, I could like bend it and make make it more that alive. That is so smart. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that is really really cool. So you wanted to and, know uh, like. How oh, I'm I'm tracing over it. Yeah, just like walk us through the because a lot of people here in the the chat or like the stream they have probably never used 3D. Yeah. And when they see a 3D object, they're like, "What the heck?" So, <laughs> like, um, yeah, just just walk us through. Like, do you just make like a new drawing object? Uh, uh, no object. Like, uh, do you draw a layer mm -hmm. and trace over it? And well, I'm not gonna show like, it on this one because it's a bit boring. Um, I have <laughs> okay. I have some more I uh, did recently. Amazing. Like this one. Um, this is not a background I did, by the way. It's just a photo. But uh, I, I did a that plane. That works. So I, I downloaded a model to use as reference. Um, and I could walk you through um, how I did animate the plane. Yeah, we can we can split it in pieces. Yeah, there's so many things to talk about. So yeah, yeah, let's talk about the so, plane animation. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm uh, importing the plane in the the, the scene, it just looks yep. like that. It's facing us. Um, I'm pegging the the thing right here. Um, the 
the drawing object? Uh -huh. Is it uh, is it the name? <laughs> I'm not so good with Toonbin. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, I mean, there's so many ways to call it. Like in the back end, like at Toonboom, we know they're called read because yeah. that's how they're called in programming. But everybody calls them like drawing layers or elements or mm -hmm. drawing things. <laughs> Don't worry about <laughs> it. No one agrees on what they're called. <laughs> Um, then um, I activated this thing right here, um, enable, enable 3D. 3D. Yeah, and that's the part where I'm always lost because I'm not sure if that's <laughs> the only thing I have to do. Well, there's two things you but could do if work. you look at them. But wait, can you open it again? Yes. Because there's two kinds of like main movement for the peg. So you can set it as a 3D path or as a separate. But in your case, if you're going to move like the plane around, you have the right choice. 3D path is the good one. And I'm going to show you why later. But yeah, so that's you're good. But I'm just saying that there's two ways that people could do 3D path or separate. They both have their good and bad. Mm -hmm. But in that case, 3D path, perfect. <laughs> you got but it. <laughs> what um been a problem for me recently is that when I'm moving the plane and want to trace over it, it's like it's disappearing in the background for some reason, or it's tracing like underneath it, even if mm -hmm. the drawing is on top. I'm glad you bring bring this issue up because it was in my notes and I was going to cover it during the stream. So Ooh. I'm going to teach you how to take care of that. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> um, so I could like do a simple movements. Um, yeah. Usually I'm starting with um first the scale where i want the plane to be um what what size i want the plane to be when i start and when i finish okay. so i'm going at the beginning of the scene and like let's say i want to move the uh, no not that i want to move the plane um it's here there you go so i'm gonna move it so it looks a bit better Sorry about that. Like for anyone watching the stream, just know it's always a struggle to animate 3D. Yes. Either if you're in Maya or in Harmony, like struggling like that is normal. Like animating mm -hmm. 3D is not as easy as it looks. It's a lot of fiddling and stuff. So if you're struggling, don't worry. Everybody is. <laughs> I'm going to do a simple And there's also, movement. yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say that there's multiple ways to like animate the 3D model. So like in your case, you're making it smaller. And then you're going to scale it when it's closer to the camera, which is totally OK. Some other people, when they animate, they would just physically put the airplane far away. And it would get smaller. Oh, and, that, and then uh, the tub. Yeah, but like it's just, yeah, it's just two different ways to do it. There's not a good and a bad way. Um, I use both all the time. So it's just mm -hmm. different ways to approach it. So that's why I'm so happy we get to see what, how you do it and to share the knowledge and stuff. I, my 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 way of doing it is kind of scuff, but <laughs> I'm glad if you can. Yeah, help. but I mean, as ratchet as a way is, if the way works, it's it's a way. <laughs> so. Yeah, true. So yeah, I'm starting um, smaller. Then I want my plane to be bigger at the end. So I'm gonna bring, um, let's see, right here. I want my plane like to be. A lot bigger here. So there, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. It's breaking in half for some reason. And yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> that 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 been my problem. So yeah, it I happens. think. So let's say the scale is good for this scene. We're gonna keep like the first key here and a last key here. So we have. A timeline. <laughs> yeah. And now the next uh, step I'm going to do is to check the path of the plane. Mm -hmm. So right now it looks very bad, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you can also click on the orange train track button, like in the camera view, and you can actually see the path of your plane. Oh, uh, yeah. The, mm -hmm. uh, where, where is that all? It's uh, right oh, yes, near yes. the Lux. Yeah, that could also help. There we go. And also, while you're here, since you got a 3D path peg, you can just go on the 
dotted line, like the orange line. And if you press P once on it, you're going to add a point and you can reshape that point. Ooh. Like if you click and drag it, you can like make a path for your plane. Woo. Oh, that's cool. You didn't, you didn't know that. <laughs> I did why use that once, but it was not for 3D models. So I don't, I didn't know it could work with 3D too. <laughs> Well, me too. I discovered it by luck, so that's why I was. Sh um, I I want to show it. It's you can add as many points as you want too, but like well, it also works in three D. <laughs> that thing blew my mind. I had no idea. I found that like recently. So. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the path is a lot better, but the timing is still. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. What I'm going to do after, and I, I'm probably not going to do the whole process right now because it's going to take forever. Of course. <laughs> but I'm slowly going to uh, fix every um, poses. Of Like we see the basic technique and the refining will be for later. <laughs> yeah, basically. So yes, let's say I'm, I want something like that. And that's that's kind of good. Um, then all you have to do um, afterward is to fix um, the keys one by one. And when you like it, you either uh, you you either can create some uh, keyframe right here, so it looks like it's um, on two or on three um, exposition. And then you can try uh, trace over it. So uh, if I bring my old animation, I did uh, with this one. It it took me a while to do this one. Yeah. Oh, one thing that can be interesting too is that when you do your tweens, like when yeah. you, when you do the tweens, you can also uh, like click on your keyframe, and you can adjust like the ease and ease out, which can also yeah, help yeah. if you're doing something quick and easy on a whim. That's true. Um, yeah. So uh, what you mean is that I can um, use this to ease in the plane and ease it out at the end, like here. <laughs> and if, like me, you're not someone who understands this graph a lot, there's even like the little drop down near the FPS, like little back um, um, drop down with like a, a few suggestions. Um, yeah, it's in the timeline right beside the FPS drop down, and you can just choose which ease and ease out you want, which can be very yeah. Fast. This one, yeah, that's that's like the quick and yeah, easy that, thing. That, that's a cool one. But yeah, let's uh, let's just remove that because it looks curse. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. keep this one. But that's also cool to show. You you see, like your your plane was animated only with the peg, so that it means if you ever change the plane to another plane like maybe an, another design, the animation stays on the peg, so you can just swap the three models. You can even use yep. a, a horse 3D model if you want, and it's going <laughs> to work. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I'm going to keep this one because it's better. Um, and I could, um, I could like, try to trace over it. Of uh, course. With yeah. you. I think I started, you. <laughs> but I'm not sure if I did. No, I didn't. So you're going to create a new drawing. Name it plain. And this uh, was actually a, a short test I wanted to do for my the, my concept of my pilot. Uh, there you go. <clears throat> so um, which one is the first? Uh, hang on. Sorry, I, Wait, I just noticed. Is your mouse an owl? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was like, is it? Is it me? I thought, I thought, no, no. I thought, I thought it was My like mouse is an owl. It's so cute. <laughs> Thank you. And when you select it, it changed to something else. When, uh, hang on, I can't. <laughs> oh, come okay. on. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> no, don't close it. <laughs> I thought you were going to close it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so there we go. Um, I usually go closer <clears throat> and select whatever tool you like. To draw. <laughs> yeah, to draw, obviously. I'm using vector usually because it's it's easier to uh, 
to to scale okay, down so without being pixelated. There's two things I can show straight up to help out, uh, which is, and all these are just common questions I get when I teach 3D for Toon Boom. Yeah. One of the biggest questions is, can you make a 3D model transparent? You know, when you use like the light table and whatnot. And uh, the answer is yes, but <laughs> you can, but you have to put a transparency node under your 3D model. Yeah. And you need to put a render preview node. So. Do you mind doing it so we can show it? Yeah, of course. Thank you. <laughs> you want it under the plane? Yeah, you just need to get a transparency node under the plane. So <clears throat> I'm going to remove this. Bring this up. Delete this one. OK. Transparency. Yeah, oh. and it's not going to work straight away uh, because you need to be in render to see it. So that's why we're going to use a render oh, preview boy. to make our. Yeah, it's a bit tiny, but it's fine. <laughs> let's let's uh, so go, if you go further. Oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's so be if better. you go into your um, your node view, you're gonna be you're, you're gonna want to use a render preview node so that this is what you see in OpenGL. Because, yeah, I get the question often, and it's like, oh, you can't make it transparent. I'm like, yes. But Do I plug it under it? Uh-huh. OK. And then even if you're in OpenGL, which is like the non-rendered view, it's going to be like that. So there we go. little advice <laughs> that can be helpful. That's very um, useful. <laughs> I'm glad to hear. The only downside, though, is that it's only going to work within your camera view. Yeah. As you can see, the bottom of the wing is being clipped, but you know that's OK, because usually you want to trace what's in your camera view anyway. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so, so let's say we wanted to trace that drawing. <laughs> why is it making? Oh. oh, this is because it's only going to render the frames that you need. So if you never show the frame, it's never it's not going to render it. Uh, oh, so like okay. basically, if you hit play and you render your whole scene, it's all, all going to turn green. Mm. That's just the render preview uh, node. Don't worry about it. So if you don't mind, I'm going to remove this for uh, of course. Tra tracing it because I, I won't see when it's little. Yeah. Ah, there you go. So we'll go. So yeah, you would just use like the brush tool and, and yeah, and basically trace just in a cool trace style. over it. I can do that too. OK. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. Um, well, on that drawing, uh, well, on that 3D model, I'm not gonna um, draw over oh, the, you're not gonna the propeller. The, yeah, it's gonna be a different layer after. Yeah, that because it's sense. gonna spin, of course. Yeah, that's cool. And a little while you trace that, there's also an important thing. When you guys work with 3D model, you don't have to work with like the highest um, quality, like 3D model with all the the the, yeah, the bases point. and polygons and stuff you can use what uh <laughs> in in my french animation school we call them tutsi which means very small <laughs> they were called very small models i don't know how they call them in english but we call we would call them like ts like tutsi <laughs> um, that's very cute yeah that one I, I think that's joey who came out with that name so it's very <laughs> cute um but i think in i think in 3d in english they called it like previs uh, or low poly models. Yeah, low poly. And that's totally fine. And even, yeah, it's even um, advised. If the only model you can find is high res, then, you know, deal with it. But if you are, if you're having someone model the, the plane for you, it's always smart to ask them, can you make it low poly, like with the lowest poly count as you can? Because that's yeah, going to help this you. This one not... was actually a plane I, I ordered from, uh, from one of my friends. Nice. And uh, it's actually the plane that I'm probably going to use in my my pilot. Nice for the my my little um, pilot dude. Yeah, it looks it looks streamlined and simple uh, to yeah. trace and stuff. So that's really cool. Because um, that's also great. Because even if you want to try to do your own models, because for my projects, 
I, st I was a 3D artist in another life, so I try to use that trade <laughs> when I do my <laughs> projects. Am I the best 3D artist? No, because I changed life. <laughs> I changed vocation some years ago, you know, because I work at Toon Boom, so I am not a 3D artist anymore, but I used to be. So am I the best at doing 3D models? Absolutely not. Can I do low poly just fine? Yes. Can anyone learn how to do low poly models? Also, yes. So if you ever want to tackle 3D for your own projects and are curious, just, just pick it up and, and try it. You don't need to make all these crazy video game models. You're just going to do something very simple, like the equivalent of a sketch. Easy, right? so, yeah, I mean, yeah, doing box modeling, like very simple models can be easy. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I advise anyone to try it because you don't need a lot of resolution on your projects. Like it's mostly going to be shapes, at least if you're getting started and you want to do something for free. And 3D model um, on 2D animation is always the best for uh, the the props. Oh yeah, props and vehicles. Amazing. Yeah, what you want to what you want uh, to keep on model, it's always the best. And if someone tells you it's cheating, just. Just don't talk to them. They're being mean. <laughs> Ignore what they're saying. <laughs> it's, there's no such things as, as as cheating if you're trying to make your project like that. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that's looking good. Let me let me pick. Uh, you know, we planned some questions, and I think I missed a bunch that are very interesting. Ha ha ha. We've we've left yours uh, ourselves. I mean, that's okay. That's what I like about these interviews. It's always very, very organic and streamlined, but I just also don't want to make sure that we don't forget some things. So yeah, oh my God, we've been talking about your project, like your pilot and stuff, but yeah. um, not a lot at the same time. So do you uh, want to share a little bit about what it is and where we can find it? I'm going to yeah, link sure. your YouTube in the chat so you don't have to worry about that. I got it. So but obviously yeah, so. I'm talking about it on my YouTube. Um, it's still very early stage. I, I didn't have <laughs> much yet to share with you guys, but it, it, there's something definitely brewing. Um, I've been gathering some amazing artists and people and voice actors. Um, we are currently working on the script and I'm struggling a bit with that part, but it, it's going to come to fruition and I'm waiting for a, a specific friend to actually uh, graduate from our school to come on board and work uh, on that with me. But uh, if I could talk about it a bit without revealing too much, uh, it's going to be about, uh, well, <laughs> if I have something to share, actually. Yes, there will be this character because people um, ask for it a lot. But, if I'm but you did change the design a bit which is very, yeah, very cool did. and interesting. Um, Just proves how even if you have an idea, it's always uh, it's always OK to change it and and to explore it and stuff. So yeah. Yes. So it's going to be about this little dude who is my main character. He's called Noah. Um, and basically, he's an air mail pilot. He's doing um, transatlantic um, deliveries. Mail, mail deliveries. <laughs> yeah. Um, during World War One, so basically he's uh, mailing letters from families and stuff, and he's just uh, an eager he's just little, a little guy trying his best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, I lost my frame. Oh, there we go. Um, so yes, he's a eager little one for adventures and. Uh, one day, he kind of crashed uh, into France, and he discovers uh, a weird-looking structure, and he finds Ooh. a map in there, um, explaining, uh, talking about like uh, some witchcraft and some some keys hidden um, into Europe, and he start with his friend Lumi, which uh, I don't think I shared here, sadly. Is Lumi uh, the deer? Yeah, he's the deer one. OK, yeah, cool. So, so yeah, I don't think I have Lumi posted here. It's a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yes anyway he's still he's still in development so uh, in character design i need to change him but uh, yes it's it's uh, it's going fine so far so Noah is going with Lumi as a best buddy, as co-pilot, and he's starting an adventure to try to find those keys and um, what they unlock. So he's gonna be finding a bunch of uh, a bunch of cool characters, including uh, Jay Z Bell, which is a witch, um, who's gonna help them a lot in their quest, and. Uh, Yes, so here's some concept I've been working on, uh, on, on changing your outfit. Yeah, the long dress looks so good. It makes a super you. cool silhouette. So yes, <laughs> there's a curse frame, but that's the old, uh, old design. <laughs> that's the new one. So I think I'm going to go with that for the, the pilot. It's so pretty. <laughs> Thank you. Because she's a Norwegian, and yes, I, I love uh, a lot the... Uh, Europe culture, and yeah, so that's all I'm gonna say for now because I don't. Thank you so much for much. sharing. Of course, yeah. but yes, I'm having a lot of help. <clears throat> um, it's still uh, just a volunteering project for now because uh, I am broke. Yeah. I and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I'm but happy I'm, to help. <laughs> I'm having amazing help, including uh, Z. And hey, hey. Uh, a lot of my friends, uh, amazing voice actors, by the way, who, uh, who did an amazing job. And I'm working on some uh, project right now, some concept scenes uh, with some dialogue on them, uh, in them. And I don't know why the audio doesn't work on the stream. So I don't think there's a point of... Yeah, it's okay. Showing it. Well, but, we'll yeah. just need to hire. We'll, we'll just need to call you back for like, um, another. Yeah. Stream and like, maybe talk specifically about that. It would be great. But yeah, that's the plane of my uh, my little pilot. In a well, pilot. Thanks for sharing. And um, <laughs> people who are watching the stream, I also put the link in the chat so you can all check it out and be like, oh, that's so cool. And um, yeah. Yeah. All right, back to the plane. <laughs> yes, uh, let's just finish uh, like tracing over this one. And I think it's uh, where my problem occurred. Yeah, when we're going to like trace through the plane. There we go. <laughs> it's not going to work. And I'm here to solve it. It's going to be fun. What's easy. going on? <laughs> so, yeah, so when you trace, it goes through the plane, right? Is that yep, what happened? It, well, it goes under, like. Yeah, OK. So this happens, because if you go into the perspective view, you know where it is, right? Hang on. I lost it again. There we go. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe you should put it in instead of your camera so we can actually see something. Yep. It's a bit, it's a bit small. <laughs> it's small. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Whoa! <laughs> OK. <laughs> uh, oh my god, it's so tiny! So you see, if you move around, you have the drawing, and when you draw, it will go through literally the three models. So it's not a bug, it's not your fault, it's just life, and we're gonna solve it. <laughs> <So> <laughs> now, if you go back to your camera, and the good thing is that this, this the fix, you can like package it in your, your little library and mm -hmm. use it forever. Like it's a one fix for all, so it's really cool for once. Um, so if so, what happens, like I said, is that the drawing is currently cutting through the 3D model. So yep. to solve it, you have like multiple options. Either you try your best to always have your 3D model behind, like the the zero zero axis of your, your camera. But let's be honest, this is complicated, and I wouldn't mm -hmm. advise it. I have a super easy solution. You can just go into your node view, and we're yep. gonna need one simple thing one simple peg that you can put on top of your drawing a peg you said yeah okay. a little peg that you put on top of the not the plane the drawing oh this one yeah you put it on top and then you probably know what it is but people in the chat don't there is a beautiful tool in harmony called maintain size yep. um it's located up there with like the uh, animated animation button 
what this tool does is if you have like a multi-plane background with like multiple um multiple like images like like a think adventure time opening with so many mountains and stuff you can take these mountains and bring them forward and backward in space but in your camera they're not going to change size even though they get closer to the camera it's like a 3 thing um so if you take that peg and you get your top view yes uh... or side view depends uh, i don't have any uh, preferences oh but wait you, you could have left it where it was i'm sorry <laughs> Oh, it's not a uh, relevant. We, yeah, yeah, because because we need to see the top and the camera view. So, like, okay. if you take actually leave it like that oh, like in that? the perspective view, that's smart. I didn't think about it, but that's good. <laughs> if you take the blue arrow and you like, if you if you pull it like down, like closer, the drawing is gonna get bigger. But in your camera view, it's not gonna change size if you do the same thing. So. If you do this, you see the drawing is not going to change size, but it's oh. going to get closer to your camera. So if you take that and you, you pull it really close, like pull that like a, a kilometer in front, like just pull <laughs> it down a lot, it's going to get like whoosh, right in the camera's face. So that means that you can just keep drawing and the chances of your model going in front of it are pretty slim. Well, depending on how much your camera moves, right? Let me try that. Um, yeah, so in so the camera. If you, yeah, if you draw, it's going to be good because now your drawing is always going to be in front of your 3D model. Yay! Now, if your 3D model gets too close to the camera, it might not work. But, you know, 90% of the time, it's going to be just fine. Let me just try at the end just to see. Yeah. And the good thing is that you can see into the top view where, like, it's going to be weird. Um, but I think it'll be fine to draw. I don't know why she's breaking right now. I know why. It's because of the the clipping plane. We can we can tackle that later. Yeah. Uh, it's just because your plane is too close to the camera, so it's being clipped. But um, yeah, see, it works. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! It does. And you can you can you can even see into like the top view when you draw. Like it, it makes like a little line, and this is where your drawing is. So if your drawing is still in front of your plane, just make sure that it's actually yes. like you're pulling it even closer to the camera. But so it's good. Yeah. It, it gotta be like in front all the time. Yes, but there's a thing where, like, when you pull it, don't animate it. Like, always pull it from the same keyframe. Because yeah. if you animate the maintain size, you're going to have some wacky stuff happening, like distortions and weird stuff. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, like, yeah, just be careful about that. <laughs> but it should be good. Um, yeah, so that's how you solve this problem. So now we know how to solve the transparency and the clipping of the drawing. Well, cool. thank you. Yeah. And the but, last thing we're going to tackle too, like in terms of problem, is one we could see where you're playing when it's outside of the camera, it was going bananas. Like the, the, the thing were like distorted and oh, yeah. perspective and stuff. So there's also a way to solve it. So we're going to check after. Or now, if you want. Okay, yeah, we can. Oh, it's check up it to now. you. I don't mind. <laughs> okay, yeah, we can check it right now. So just take a frame where like the wings are out of the screen, and we're gonna fix that. I like um, that. So yeah, yeah. So now, if you zoom out, you're gonna see that the wings are like going. Oh yeah, furry. they go bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is like I said, it's not a bug, and it would do the same in Maya. Um, if you're looking like through your camera, this is because Harvey only wants you to see the actual like perspective in the camera frame so if you go into like the scene settings it's uh, like a, a choice you can have either it's a perspective camera or an orthographic camera is it uh um, here? yeah and there's like okay. scene settings Hang on, now scene like th set. there's more to know about it. So, like go read the documentation but if you look at pers uh, projection at the bottom near the frame rate there's yep. perspective or orthographic. If you put orthographic, you're going to lose some features like for depth and whatever, but it's going to make your 3D model always perfect. Mm. So if you press on OK, you're going to see it. Oh, it's going to be always OK. But it it does change the way your scene is read in 3D and stuff. So sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. So just try it and make sure that it works. Like I think That if shot you have, like, some is somehow very cinematic. <laughs> the what? The shot oh, yeah, right that now is very cinematic. I don't know why. Like it's a I picture know it's from... like it it would be a nice like movie poster from my childhood. <laughs> yeah. From like Treasure Planet era and whatnot, like these amazing <laughs> 2D movies. Yeah, sorry for interrupting. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no no, I mean I get it. I, I, I completely agree with that statement. 
nice cinematic picture. I want to see these little characters now in the plane doing their things. Yes, I can't wait um, to animate that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Um, okay, and the and one last thing I can also show, like if you bring your plane, sorry, closer to the camera yes. again, like this. Let's say you want to animate like the propeller or something. I just want to show that if you go into your node view, yes. you can add a node that's called the sub node animation. Hang on. Sub -node. Yeah, it's a handful <laughs> of a mm. word. Yeah, sub node animation. You can put it between the composite and the plane. Yes. No, but look yeah. on top. No. You yeah. see, you have your plane. Just put it right under your plane, like insert it within it. Like, you know, there? like outside. In there? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you take the wire from your 3D model and you shove it into this one. Okay. Boop. There we go. So that thing, what it allows you to do is it allows you to move individual pieces of your model. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. So if you click on your model uh, with the transform tool, and I forgot the key. It might be control, but I might be wrong. And you click like on a piece, like the the what the 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 propeller or something, like you control click on it. I don't think it was a multi piece uh, model. Well, if your model was multi piece, then you hang could on, do hang that. On, hang on, hang on, hang on. I have this one too, <laughs> which is another okay, concept. Well, that might work. This one was downloaded, actually. Oh, so um, I I think I know exactly which one it is because I've used it on another project. <laughs> I think I got a like turbo squid or something. Oh yeah, I've seen that model. It's so reliable. <laughs> <laughs> so if you take like the sub node and then you take one of the wheels, then you'll be able to move it uh, on its own, which can be very useful. I'll try that. Hang on. Sub node. Oop. And like every element will be one line in your timeline, so that's really cool. Um, I think it's control click. Seems to work. Oh, control. Yeah, you click and then you control click on an object, mm. or alt click or something. Oh yeah. Yeah, there you go. So cool. And you can like you can pop it out. You can tear it away. And it, the pivot point will be the same pivot point that was in the three D model, like a, mm. in Maya or whatever Blender you're using. Um, oh my God! It's only yeah. one. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, yeah, you have to you have to know what you're doing. So, like, whenever I do models for Harmony, I kind of group and freeze objects together that I'm going to move. Like this, mm. this was taken from the internet, so it's not made for Harmony. But if a model yeah. is made for Harmony, usually they're going to take like the pieces and kind of merge them together so that the animator can just animate them easy and stuff. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But now you know. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. Thank you. Um, no problem. I'm going to go check the chat to see if anyone has any questions. And we have 10 minutes left, by the way. This thing goes so fast. Oh, no more. And we have uh, Riviere, who's very happy in the chat and like, this is fascinating. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, but they learned something new, so that's cool. Let's see yeah. what YouTube has to say. Um, yeah, no questions there. So cool, cool, cool. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I lost the page for a second, but I got it now. Um, yeah, so that's, oh, I mean, that's so interesting. And yeah, what about that scene that you were showing with your, I think it's uh, Jezebel who was sitting on the car? Yeah, I made some progress since, but uh, so, it's kind of a kind of an older version. I have Noah now animated in it too. I wanted to use it uh, for like a loop animation, a mm -hmm. loop animation over music, and uh, I I, uh, I would have cool like thing. my 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 three characters just <laughs> having fun together. <laughs> Oh, that's so nice. So you basically traced the 3D model in the angle you wanted, and then you kind of deformed a bunch of things. Yeah. Uh, and animated them in space. That is so smart. So efficient. The wheel are plus, supposed to be plus. rolling too, but yeah, it's not. It's not done yet. <laughs> You'll get there. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's such a cool thing to share. It's very Thank nice. You. 
I love the little bounce that uh, she has when she jumps and poop. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> With these like legs. They remind me of my dog's legs. They're so long. They go on forever. <laughs> it's French fry's <laughs> so leg. Cool. <laughs> French fry. I've never seen it like that, but I will now. We usually say noodles, but they're actually more straight than noodles. So you're right. It's French fries mm. all the way. Stealing that. It's mine now. <laughs> I actually um, did a meme about that. I could share it if I find it again. Sure. <laughs> Hang on. In the meantime, I have a question for you. Um, Shoot. <laughs> there. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Well, okay, yeah. I see um, it now. You are the anyway. prize. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, okay, I got it. So. Um, 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 yeah, so where, because that's a question I get often, like, where do you find 3D models to, to work with? Because the oh. plane, you commissioned it, which is fun, but not everybody has, like, the availability of a cool 3D modeler on hand. So do you, do you have some advice of where we can find 3D models? Yeah, I could show some uh, um, site. Well, I use usually Sketchfab. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that a good one. You can find a bunch of 3D model, like crazy amount of 3D models and about yeah. <laughs> everything you can possibly imagine. Um, some are uh, free. And I think in this one, you can also see them before you buy them. You can like see them in your yeah. 3D, rotate them and stuff. So that's really interesting. You, usually when I search for 3D model, I'm going to straight up like uh, search what I'm looking for and Sketchfab would uh, appear first. So uh, let's <laughs> that I wanna, makes sense. I, I helped a friend recently with a uh, skateboard. Oh, okay, I see, yeah, there's so many choices. And, and you, you can have just... like infinity choice of models to use in your scenes. And yeah, and for people watching the looking... stream, um, yeah, in, in terms of what can Harmony take in, there's a, there's a bunch of different, uh, format you can get of course check the documentations to be sure but usually obj's fbx or uh, like fbx is the best choice you can have to import in harmony yeah. which is usually the most popular format so if you can get an fbx it should work fine in harmony which is uh, very nice and can you go back to harmony i just want to show one thing um with the either of your model uh yeah because now we're working with a 3d model but I just yeah. want to remind that there's a way to also work with the 2D model from your 3D. And all you have to do is like when you import the 3D model from like the import uh, dialog box. Uh, yes. I mean, if you have it on hand, if not, it's okay. Game oh, yeah, okay, you do. Well, okay, I have the yeah. skateboard so... right now. I don't know where <laughs> I could. I mean, want any, me to import any model. That? Okay. Yeah, that'll work. God but damn. no, don't do it yet. Um, Oh, okay. Hang on. Uh, wait, am I? Yeah, <laughs> on the other screen. But while you search for that, people who are watching, I just want to say that it's uh, you have the conversion um, part, and you can say convert to two D, and this is going to take you through like a little um, yeah. interface that's going to allow you to have your model as a two D object. I'm sorry, I can't for... find it. Hang on. It's okay. No worries. I think it's in my image. Mm. Sorry for the delay. Yeah, if you, <laughs> it's okay. And if you don't have it, don't worry. Um, we have so many like content about it. And I'm also going to share into the chat a bunch of very uh, helpful videos if you're trying to understand how 3D works in Harmony. So I'm mm -hmm. going to just share those very quickly. Into oh, there the I have the I have the plane. Oh, nice. There. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you just have to next? check at the bottom, convert to 2D. There's oh, yeah. a button, yeah. All right. And oh, oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> oh it's okay, don't worry we'll about it. The name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really, no worries. Um, there we go. So, yeah, so like I said, in the chat, I'm going to share a bunch of little videos that you can check out if you're curious about 3D animation in uh, Harmony. Oh, there is a question in the chat. Where is it? Um, uh, 
I don't see a person in the chat. So person can ask it again because I can't find it. Oh, how much did it took? How much did it take to make the short? Did you have that idea before? So, okay, I think it's how much time did it take to make the short? Because it was your short film, so there was no budget on it, right? So the it's just the short film. Yeah. <laughs> um, it took four months of intense work, but from idea to final product, I'd say it took about a year. Because mostly I had um, regular classes. Um, yeah, that, that's why it's so hard to say because you had your short film, but you also had all the regular classes to do yeah. and the animation classes. And, you know, it was an assignment for school. So it's not as if you were doing a pilot per se. Yeah, it's people, not. So it's, I, it's I worked a bit hard on it every say. day, <laughs> but uh, I had other classes and uh, traveling to do. So I'd, if I'd say total amount of time I worked on it, it would be at least six months. Yeah, at least. And that was like a minute, like 30 yeah. seconds animatic for, oh, but that's interesting. It was a 30 seconds animatic that turned into a one minute ish short. Yeah, because I'm just so if a crazy. Anyone is, um... No, 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 but like, everybody do that. does that. <laughs> but it, it's natural. That's why our school is so strict with the animatic being 30 seconds, because they know that shit's going to hit the pan. It's going to be like four minutes in the end. Yeah. So let it be known, folks, if you have a project, and your animatic is five minutes, you're gonna end up with at least seven to ten minutes of final footage. So I mean, sometimes I have an idea as short as you can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes I have an idea. It's like very short, just a little thingy some character would do together, and it end up like something twenty seconds, which yep. which could easily have been five if I followed my first idea. <laughs> <laughs> Because I yeah. mentor so many <clears throat> students and people who are doing their short film. It's like, my animatic is 15 minutes, but it's okay. Like, uh, 15 minutes is fine in final animation. But I'm like, no, if your animatic is 15 minutes, your final project is going to be half an hour. So always consider it's going to be like <laughs> plus half at least. So, yeah. yeah, beware. Like, we are both warning you it's going to happen. <laughs> Shit is going to hit the fan. <laughs> and... Um, Oh my God, it's already been an hour. It's so fast. Um, we can still go for like a few minutes. Like, do you have anything you want to add? Maybe like about your project or about anything that is relevant about 3D animation or whatever, like something we forgot, you know, like <laughs> any last words? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think we pretty much sums it up for real. Um, about my project, um, obviously I'll update you guys soon. <clears throat> Uh, as I mentioned, it's still very just a concept phase uh, stage, and um, we're working and uh, working on that every day. Well, I am, um, and yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll just keep uh, keep you tuned. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're taking your time with that project and that getting like to. Yeah. Um, like because it's so easy when you have a project that pops in the internet and then you get kind of almost bullied by the fan base. It's like produce something, but it's yeah, nice that I you're just, taking I just, your time. I don't want it and to listening be like to yourself. <laughs> fast paced and botched. I just I I, I really want to work on. You want to make something nice. <laughs> yeah. Make well, sure everything good. is good before even starting animating or um, doing some you know, backgrounds like releasing... and stuff. <clears throat> Really, releasing a few little shorts here and there just to test things out, and it's really nice. So yeah. I wish you the best in that project. And as you can and see, I have like three in the progress, so I'll, I'll definitely keep you updated on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. And thank you so much for being with us today. I hope you had fun. I hope everybody who listened and will listen also had fun. I had fun. Well, I am thanking you. It's been my pleasure. <laughs> well, thanks for the invite. Pleasure is shared. Yay. And uh, with that, unless we have anything to add, I will say goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. Don't forget to come back to our Twitch and Toon Boom and Toon and YouTube streams and videos because there's going to be like the, re the recording is going to be posted there and we have new content every, um, every day, every week. So always stay tuned. Thank you so much, guys. 
Yeah, goodbye. See you.